Um, we have just started uh, implementing a Master's of Science in Information Technology and Administrative Management. Uh, it is a one-year program. Uh, we are a 10-week quarter system, so we have a fall, um, winter, spring, and summer. Uh, so the fall, winter, spring, and summer, um, students take three classes every 10 weeks, and they can complete the, the program completely online in one year. Um, let's go back into our undergraduate degree. We did start with an in-class uh, degree. And then uh, following the trend of what students wanted to go online, we created uh, the same content, same outcomes, and created the new curriculum, just different assessments, because we always have to stick with the outcomes that are approved. Um, so we keep the outcomes and we keep, uh, well, I would say we, we change the format so that it goes into, we started with Blackboard and now we're in Canvas. So we have a specific look uh, for each, each class. So students know if they're in a class, it will be look the same. It'll have 10 modules for one module of assignments per week. Um, and what we do is take a look at the outcomes, work with the professors um, or the course leads in each of those uh, sections of uh, area topics that we have. For each specialization, we are capped at 20. Uh, we'll find out if that is too many or not enough uh, as this particular uh, year of students graduate and they give us feedback. Uh, so we're going to stay at 20 because it's the quality of the class. We don't, uh, you know, our undergraduates, we have up to 45 in, in a class online. Um, so we brought that down to 20 so that the professors can get to know the students more one-on-one. -on -one. It's also much more um, grading, uh, I guess, quality of grading, because we really have to give them feedback, and most of that is on their research projects. So, we're, so a professor's reading, uh, 20 or 40 different writing assignments and that uh, they want to give the one-on-one -on -one -on -one feedback which the students need and expect at that particular level. Yeah. Of course they create the content, they look at the uh, outcomes and they may change the assessments for that environment. Um, the, one of the biggest uh, challenges is to get the mindset of the faculty to go into online. Uh, we've been lucky because we've been doing online education for about 10 years, and now the faculty we get are used to teaching online for, non, for tenure track positions. They, we actually put in our uh, requirements of, for the job is that you have had to have some experience teaching online so that we don't need to train them. Um, quality is controlled also by our Office of Multimodal Learning for online. They were on, they used to be called something else, but now they're for online quality. Um, so they take a look at, uh, before the class goes live, they look at our class and see if it meets particular um, requirements. Then after each class, students fill out uh, a uh, feedback form of how the class went. So they're very honest with that and they tell us uh, if the professor did feedback, if they like the discussion boards, uh, those types of things. So uh, we have many different ways to uh, figure out if we're doing the right things at the right quality. And we try to be as consistent as we can. Uh, sometimes the faculty member comes in and wants to do something totally different. Uh, so that's a challenge. Mm -hmm. Um, it's too early for the master's degree um, because it's just this new year. Uh, the undergraduate degree, we, it's, we have it sort of down a, a little bit as far as what we know the process and we are able to change or not change um, every year. So it is one thing that we go through and uh, we sit as a faculty and say maybe we should get rid of this class in our core mm -hmm. or maybe, you know what, we need a wireless class in our core for undergraduate. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's, it's creating the class or, or moving the class over depending on where it needs to be offered. Our in-class students are young, 18, 19, 20, traditional age. Our online students are older, so they're working they're in their upper 20s, 30s, 40s, all the way up to 60s. Uh, so that is a different student as well, and we have to adjust for that audience as well. Um, as far as retention rates, I, I don't have that you know, per, uh, personally. Okay. Um, we do it. We do pretty well at it because we, if we see someone not registering, we go out and ask yeah. what's going on. Or if we, uh, students' GPA, we have good advising. GPA goes down. We, they get flagged and they come in okay. for our advising. Yeah. 
be ready for anything um, and stick with it um, and be, uh, I guess, be confident in what you believe in that this will work and always try to figure out what the administration wants and then to also tie the needs of the, the industry, the needs of the students and the needs of the university together. And that's sometimes very difficult to do, um, but it's a dream for the impossible. Uh, a deep learning curve because a lot of things had to happen across the university. Uh, so one of the big challenges is we had a lot of applicants ask us a lot of questions. Uh, the majority we could answer, but the majority we had to go out into the university and find the answers. Um, another challenge was getting everything approved through the university, both on the funding side and also on the curriculum side. That's a, a, there are so many people in the process of both of those, it slowed us down. Um, we did learn from that, but it did, uh, we got nervous a little bit here and there as to someone going to say no along that line. We were fortunate uh, by justification of need analysis and uh, some quantitative numbers that uh, we got through the whole process. And uh, here we are now, um, filling our, we had a goal of 40 students to come online in the first cohort, and we've exceeded that. We have 47 students. Uh, the 40 are online, and the, the other seven are in class.